The International Monetary Fund's managing director said on Tuesday that climate change can create, quote, excellent opportunities, end of quote, for the private sector in Africa, adding the investing in the low-carbon economy can create jobs. At the COP27 climate summit in Egypt, Georgieva said that this creates hunger, raises the risk of famine, and even leads to insecurity for the continent, but also for the rest of the world. Scores of presidents, along with thousands of diplomats, climate negotiators, business leaders, activists, and journalists descended on the Red Sea resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh to take part in discussions and negotiations slated to go through November 18. World leaders are making the case for tougher action to tackle global warming Tuesday as this year's international climate talks in Egypt heard growing calls for fossil fuel companies to help pay for the damage they have helped cause to the planet. macroeconomic and financial stability and on the flip side investing in low carbon climate resilient uh, economy opens up job opportunities uh, in fact jobs in renewable energy much more plentiful and better paid than uh, the traditional jobs in uh, in uh, uh, coal mining so uh, we see that from an IMF perspective we see the climate crisis as a major structural transformation force and we want our countries to take uh, good policy actions so they are competitive, they are prosperous, uh, they have a good future. You're back on Jakarta Movers and Shakers. Even amid clout of global economic challenges and uncertainties from a global food and energy crisis to monetary policy tightening, Indonesia's economy still recorded positive growth in the third quarter or higher than growth in China the U.S. and its regional peers, such as Singapore. On Monday, Indonesia's Statistics Bureau announced that in the third quarter of 2022, Indonesia achieved economic growth of 5.72% on an annual basis. Meanwhile, compared to the previous quarter, Indonesia's GDP grew by 1.81%. Indonesia's third quarter growth was also higher than the second quarter growth of 5.44% and also higher than first quarter growth of 5.01%, proving the resilience of Indonesia's economy even amid all the global headwinds brought on by the pandemic and Russia's Ukraine war. Indonesia continued to achieve a balance of trade surplus for 29 months in a row, Meanwhile, domestic consumption remains strong amid the easing of COVID restrictions. Meanwhile, Indonesia's GDP growth was substantially higher compared to other countries around the world, including the U.S., which saw 2.6% growth, and China, which saw 3.9% growth. Indonesia's third quarter growth was also higher than Singapore's and the European Union. <laughs> 